Today, the town of Coal Strip stands at a crossroads, its future uncertain. In tonight's Q2 Rewind, we go back to a time when this company town stood at another watershed moment, the creation and controversy over Coal Strip Units 3 and 4. Coal Strip 3 and 4, now a fixture on the eastern Montana landscape. But for many years, it was unclear if the plants would ever be built. Through nearly a decade of planning and building, the Montana Power Company wrestled with neighbors, air quality advocates, regulators, and the courts for the chance to build, and then fought again for who would foot the bill. You need electricity when you need it, and we can't issue a rain check and invite you back to pick up some kilowatt hours next week. Coal Strip in the 70s was a town with promise. Units one and two came online in 1975. Workers flooded in to work the mine and run the plant. Plans for a third and fourth power plant were already in the works in hopes they would be up and running by 1978. But it wasn't that easy. Not only did Montana's Public Service Commission deem units three and four were not needed to meet Montana's energy needs, the EPA nearly killed the project to protect air on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation. The EPA's involvement drew protests in the fall of 1977 to downtown Billings, with labor unions ripping the EPA for stepping in. It wasn't until 1979 that the agency finally gave the green light. But the demand for power didn't shoot up like the company predicted. Instead, it dropped with a slumping economy. The closure of the Anaconda Company in 1983 deprived it of its biggest customer. And nuclear power from Washington State was now an option. Plus, the cost of the project ballooned from $500 million to $1.8 billion, leading Montana Power Company to ask for a controversial $96 million rate hike from customers. But the Public Service Commission balked at the idea, much to the delight of the project's most vocal opponent, the Northern Plains Resource Council. So we've been raising these issues for 10 years about what's used and useful and who should pay for these capital improvements that the power company wants to make. Uh, finally, somebody listened. And I'm delighted. But like I say, it's not over. And he was right. It wasn't over. After fighting it out in court, the PSE finally agreed to an $80 million rate hike, but insisted it be phased in over eight years. Again, today, all four of the coal strip plants face an uncertain future. Jay will have more on that dilemma coming up Wednesday in a special series of reports.